August. I'll open the meeting of August 12th, 2013, 7.04. John Melcher, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Susan Elwell. Charlie Costello. John Melcher seconded it. Frank Marcogiano. Okay. So, let's see. Tonight we have <coughs> at 7 a uh, presentation for the water board. So, yep. Yeah. Hello. And so, would you guys just arrived at the right time? With right. glasses of water. Uh, yeah, the water, from the water. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Uh, let's see. What's uh, the best way for. I guess the best way is for you to sit there. Um, we, we ask that you guys come down uh, and give us a status report on how the new treatment plant is moving along and kind of just tell us what we're getting and, and, and how that's going to make everybody's water better. And uh, so you have about 25 minutes. You need that much time to give us an explanation, and then we might have some questions afterwards. Okay. And then I've got my hand, my computer here. We'll have questions texted in from the public. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, we have all the answers. They're making a popcorn. Right so, uh, my name is Tim Toomey, I'm chairman of the uh, water board, and John Hargraves is a resident expert overseeing uh, our interest in, you know, uh, constructing this uh, marvelous facility that's going to provide us uh, cleaner water than we're even having. Uh, we're going to make a real um, uh, improvement to our drinking water quality. Uh, not that we didn't have good quality water before, but this is uh, part of a requirement that we're having to uh, um, sure that we're going to have uh, free water or free uh, bacteria. We've had some problems in the past where um, we've had, uh, because we've had high mineral content in the water, uh, you know, both manganese and, and iron, uh, it has uh, hindered our ability to treat the water with the chlorine. So the, the, the end product of this improvement to our uh, facility will be uh, um, clearer water. Uh, it's, there's some parts of town that have uh, some cloudy issues from time to time. So it'll be clearer. Uh, it'll be, uh, um, we'll be able to uh, minimize our use of chlorine. The smell will go away? Yeah. Well, not completely, but you'll, you know, the sensitive user will still smell, smell some, you know, chlorine, I believe. I don't know, what do you think, John? It'll be much less. And then um, we'll have um, you know, just a better quality water at this point. And it's safer because we've got this treatment plant on board and we're going to um, have less um, alarms of you know, having some hits with some chloroform or whatever that we've had in the past that causes some problems. So you know, we're addressing our needs to, to uh, uh, Get, go forward from some of these episodes we had in the past, and we're going to have uh, you know, efficient, cleaner water. Right now, we're, uh, I don't know, what, we're, what would you say we're about at least 50% done with uh, the construction? Or? Well, I can explain it. We're pretty much complete with the foundation and most of the concrete work. There's a lot of uh, concrete work goes into these facilities. And they're about to finish the, the cinder block masonry, which is above the first floor, getting ready to put the roof on top. Uh, so we're a pretty good step now to start bringing all the equipment and connecting all the equipment with all the pipes and, this, and the control systems. What's next? We're trying to gear up for that bit of work. Um, Pile system is the bowels of the plant, which is a, the filter, and the backwash system. Uh, basically, it's an attempt to uh, provide a 
a, ba a filter system with its backwash components off the truck comes in and you plug it in more or less. It's not that simple, but it's it's a little bit of an improvement over what they used to do was try to custom build it in place and design it in place. Now you have specialty companies that do that. Pal, P A L L. Um, right now the change orders, uh, additional costs, let's say, are completely under control, less than a percent. Uh, and what does that mean? Is the, these 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 projects go on the table, and it is, it's assumed that there's going to be some cost overruns. So our role now is heavily involved in making sure the cost overruns are under control and that we, we handle them properly. That's, that's, that's what we've been doing. So we're happy to be in this position now to say that they're less than 1%. And what percent of the construction would you uh, estimate you're at now? Are you at halfway point, 75 percent? I would say 40 percent. 40 percent. I think we're done the easy part. Uh, now it gets challenging. You mean making the shell? The shell is straightforward. Yeah. In my opinion. The process controls and the piping and the pumps and all the rest of the equipment have to come together to start up and work. So we're, we're gearing up for that phase. And the general contracting company that you've you've hired, you have a good working relationship with them. Things are that has a lot to do with what we do. We try to maintain a good working relationship. So we have to compromise and discuss things through. And that's what it's all about. <clears throat> Western Sense is also heavily involved, as you know. It's, it's a process, you know. We it's a it is a complicated plan, and uh, it, you know we're putting it in, and it's going to be with troubleshooting and everything like that. So we have a lot of people with a high degree degree, degree of uh, expertise looking at everything that goes on and then projecting out. I don't know four four to six weeks and then looking at things, what's going to come up, but making sure everything is just right. John is helping us making sure that you know that the town is getting um, um, satisfaction, you know, getting it done efficiently, uh, cost effectively. So, so we, you know, we've got a good team at this point, and uh, we're proceeding on, and you know, things look pretty good. Have you been, have you been out there? Or? I haven't. Uh, I'd like to go out some take a look. Uh, when is the expected completion date? Scheduled for March. March of next year. And that that involves well it'll involve a lot of testing before you go online. Correct. DEP is also involved in the oversight of to make sure everything is working correctly. Going to stack here. Yeah. Meet their standards. There's a lot of parties that will be watching that. Once it's online, is there a, an inspection or checking process that goes on periodically to make sure everything's okay? Well, they, they do, t they, as we do now, they'll be taking tests probably more frequently, you know, when they start up the program. The uh, operation and debug it. And they're going to be training our people how to run it. There's a month in there on the contract, is it, John? Yes. That's, that shows these fellows how to operate this plan. So it, it, it's going to be heavily overseen by the DEP and the um, our consulting firm. And uh, they'll be taking tests. So that that's the proof of the pudding. They'll, They'll be taking a, a gamut of tests. That they'll be probably monitoring um, you know, the manganese on the iron and all those metals before it goes into the membrane, what it is afterwards. And then we'll show that you know it's working properly. Is this membrane filtration system in place in other communities around? 
you know. Yes. It's a it's a well proven technology. No, it's I'm told it's it's more on the Cadillac side of things. Uh, Newburyport uses one. Uh, we have we have a list that we'll be happy to provide the board. But there's there's people around that 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 might be uh, helpful if you need answers to questions that they might have experienced before. It's not like it's a it's a prototype that, that hasn't been used locally. Right. I'm oh, sure it was. A lot of communities do. You wouldn't want to be the first one. No. <laughs> <coughs> How much chlorine is used now, and what do you think would be needed then? Or what, what's kind of projected to get things under control with the manganese? It would have to be less. There's no way that you know right. you're going to put all this components together and, and, and use more. Of the same. Uh, the problem is, is the um, the iron and manganese level is so high that about all I can do to combat that is pull more chlorine out. Um, so now that we have these filters and everything, we're going to have to be using less. It would defy reality. So the filters will be pulling out the manganese, iron and manganese, and the iron, and everything else that we want. And, and how much of a maintenance process is there to the filters? Or is, is that automatic, or does that have to be manually done? We're being led to believe that you can pretty much operate itself. There'll be minimal requirements for, to staff the plant, especially with the SCADA system reporting to remote locations like the central state office. Mm -hmm. I guess it sounds like one person can be in that plant. Mm -hmm. and, and does the manganese and iron just get deposited in, into a pile somewhere and, and have to be removed from the site? Or is, does that have to be uh, mechanically moved? Or how, how does that the process work? The filter starts to clog up, if you will. Then it reaches a level where it needs to be backwashed. The backwash goes into a, a lagoon on site. And that, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how long the lagoon can go with the where it needs to be uh, cleaned out. Mm -hmm. So as the filters clogged, the pressure rises and trips the alarm. And exactly. Mm -hmm. It's similar to a swimming pool filter. Yeah, the pressure. Same idea. Probably the pressure builds up and there's electronic controls that sends it to the SCADA system. The SCADA system tells you know, whether we're on duty or the operator, you know, there's a problem or an alarm might go off. Um, the life expectancy of these all filters is right now we've heard that it's like five years. So we're not sure exactly where we can get out because it's all a function of concentration. You know how many gallons you pump through there, so it's a it's a rather rough, complicated thing. You know. We'll soon find out you know, what our operating costs are. And, uh, so that's that's going to be a ch challenge for the water department in the next you know, year is to find out you know, how we're going to operate this and you know, operate it more efficiently. Or what's the operating cost for? It. So we're, we're estimating what the operating cost is right now, <coughs> but you know we'll. Fine, two and a half minutes, but it's like. Now, the staff that you have now, do they need new certifications to run this kind of plant? No. no. no in, in case, to run this plant, you need a D2, T2 license. Now, D means distribution. Uh, to run in the plant or to operate the plant, you need a T2, which is a more sophisticated treatment license than we have or have had in the past. We had a T1 license for our operators. So now we have a T2. And I think our uh, primary operator has a better rating than that. So we have, <coughs> these guys are motivated to get the higher licenses. So there's a minimum license for this plan. And we're going to be covered with that with all operators. 
you have uh, our positions as such, we have primary, we have one primary operator, and within our staff right now plans, there's two uh, secondary operators. And um, that, those guys operate under the primary operator license, but they're capable of running the plant too. Or will be because they need experience with this particular plan. It's not like this is like an off-the-shelf type of plan. These guys will be trained to run this plan, so they'll be uh, you know overseen by both the state and the uh, contractor is going to provide the training uh, for the first month. I think it is. So, uh, so we get that face covered. Can we have enough staff? Everybody's on board. And well, we, we're, we're short of staff right now. We, should, we need a, another secondary operator. We, I don't know if you've heard, we just hired a, a primary operator. Yeah. And he's a very qualified gentleman. And um, he's uh, been the superintendent over in Georgetown for the last three or four years. So he's, he, he prefers to work with controls and you know, more on the uh, hands-on type thing mm -hmm. as far as administratively. So, we're very lucky to have these good controls too. So we were, we we scored good with getting this gentleman on board. So and hopefully, you know, he'll be training the other guys. And, you know, everybody will benefit from it. But you know, the town of Raleigh is going to, you know, be very, you know, right up to the snuff with all the, you know, the highest technology, more pure water than we've had before. So we've always. You know, in, in our operating on the water um, uh, system, we, we have a lot of checks and balances anyway, as you well know. And uh, there, there's monthly testing. There's uh, reporting uh, thresholds. And if anything like that is exceeded, then you know, uh, we're gonna make adjustments. And these guys are trained to do that. So with this new system, would be, you know, with more automation and um, to be less use of uh, chlorine, which is nice, because nobody like the lakes need uh, to drink chlorine water. I'm hoping that um, water consumption will go up instead of buying bottled water. I found that <clears throat> when I fill up a bucket or a, a watering, plant water, now with a with a hose and a, and a nozzle, that there's a bit of foam that comes on them, and I, I'm hoping, I'm thinking that that will disappear, or a lot of it will disappear. That that's some of the the mixed treatment that's in it that hopefully will will cut back because it it do, it does have an odor. Is a smell you smell the chlorine? Yeah. That's what we can. That's what we can hope for. Yeah, I know. In, in my house, I smelt the, the same thing. Um, I smelt it. It was stronger, you know, uh, I think last year than it is this year. But I could still smell it. You notice too that it's. It's. It appears to be a little less. Um, I don't find it as smelly this year. Yeah. Yeah. I. I can't. But last year, I could definitely smell it. There were some periods there where we did come up with some chloroform hits, which is a predecessor of uh, E. coli. And um, so the, the procedure is to add more chlorine and take more tests. And um, they take tests, you know, in the, the, the worst uh, cases, they at the end of uh, the, uh, the run from the pipe. And it looks where, you know, it's not so much flushing going on there. They want to make sure that we're getting the flowing out of that part of the pipe distribution system. So sometimes they have to really load up on the chlorine to uh, get it out to the far reaching areas of the distribution system. We have a few um, uh, areas in town which the, the runs go out there and there's no returns. It's hard to, to really flush those, those systems or those, those areas. So. I'm not sure, uh, you, know, you live on Bennett Hill Road, I'm not sure what's going on with our, uh, I think we got a loop going out through there. 
should be known. But some of the places are, you know, you can actually smell it for the worst. I mean, mm -hmm. other so. Well, it sounds like all in all, things are running smoothly yeah, on this we're, project. In a good direction here, Sean. Good. It's a good positive. Yeah. Well, yes, we like that. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe we will you do too, I'm sure. like to invite you in three or four months. Yeah. So it'll be like maybe Any first time. of the year, say in four months, to uh, give us an update. And maybe we might even go for a tour sometime. Sure. Well, if you have some spare time, uh, I don't see it as a problem. Definitely, Frank, you know, hook up with uh, the superintendent. And okay, he'll take you out there and just give you, a, you know, a little run around the, uh, the site and take a look at it. So, good. For John, you know, you, if you've got a free minute, just, you know, you might, you know, just uh, go down there. Yeah. You know, it's a, right now, you get the treatment plan on the construction, we get the two, we get the well house down here and the treatment shed. So the treatment shed won't, won't be used anymore. So we have the pump, you know, the pump house. And, then, and over near the treatment plant, there's several little wells there that we draw from. Across the river, we have a regular well we pump out of. And uh, that goes to a pipe, and that goes across the river over to where the treatment plant. So it's those two wells, which really, the one closest to the new treatment plant is, is probably I don't know, I think it's five or six well heads. There's, there's shallow wells. That all that water is going to go to the treatment plant. Our well next to the ball field won't be treated with that treatment plant. It'll be, you know, has its own little treatment system on it. And that's been the our best water supply mm -hmm. for a long time. So so it'll be those uh, three well systems that will be combined in our distribution system. And uh, those pumps work every day. Uh, and an eight-hour shift to fill the pipes and fill the tower on top of, uh, what do they call it? Prospect Hill. Is it Prospect Hill? Yeah. So it fills that tower all day. And then that tower maintains a supply through the night. Yeah. So when the guys come in in the morning, they, uh, they start it up again you know, and treat the water and fill the pipes and fill everybody's uh, this, you know, needs in the distribution system and fill that tank. So it's a, it's a cycle that goes on every day. And when the new treatment plant gets on, it's gonna do the same thing, only it's gonna be pure water. So you're welcome to come down and, you know, grow our water. It's wonderful Super to fun. improve our water. I remember when we had degreaser in it years ago and we had to buy water from Georgetown. Well, that was the place. That was awful. Awesome. Yeah. That was awful. Well, awesome. I think it had a saw, it was a TC. Yeah. TCE, And then that, that stuff was in the pipes system, the pipes itself too. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, um, that's a common contaminant in most water supplies. And it's really, it, it's really widespread. Mm -hmm. so MTBE is another one, so. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Keep up the good work. Yes, it's it's good good All right. We'll see you in January. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yep. you so much. Okay. Well, I understand our business at 730. Mr. Schleppoy from Dodge Road has withdrawn his question for tonight. Yes, there's a memo in there. So, yeah. We'll just uh, hold any discussion on that till he wants to come and see us again. Um, let's see, what else? Should we, let's see, we've got a 7.45. We might be able to move the 7.45 up so that uh, this is an informational meeting. Yes. Yeah, why don't we, uh, are people here for the Susan Coolidge cistern issue? That's the only one person. Oh. I'll show you any moments. Okay, well, we'll, we'll wait and do business. Great, thank you. Okay. 
Um, why don't we jump right into uh, setting a date for our fall percolation test? What what has been our normal fall yeah, season? Okay. Our normal date. September, October, October. The, the, uh, times usually uh, We usually set the date in the first meeting in September, but we don't have. Party yes. is interested. Actually, Mr. Sullivan is here in the Newbury Road. Um, so we decided to move it up for you to vote in August so we can start to prepare if you want to have a season. Um, oh, but normally we do in September and October, a um, month and a half to two months, whatever you prefer. Well, oh, we're in agreement that we want to have a fall season. Yeah. yeah. And we usually do it for September and October. Yes. How do people feel about that? In the water conditions are good this year. Anyway, there's no reason to be fearful of that. So, someone want to make a motion? Yeah, make a motion that our fall percolation testing season be for the month of September and October of 2013. Well, I can't read the, uh, I can't, oh, I can't, I can't see the dates in September. Um, the first is a Sunday, right? Yeah, we'll start at the day after later. So September 3rd. September 3rd, or the end of October. How are you? Okay. All those in favor. Aye. We're all right. right. Okay. Uh, let's see. Well, why don't we just stop our ongoing topics and jump into the 745 meeting, and then we can pick that other one up. So, uh, you, you all want to come up and sit here, and uh, You're all set is that about what that. you have in mind? You're all yes, set. thank you very much. Okay. You're the boss. It's all about you. <laughs> <laughs> so, first of all, <laughs> all uh, uh, introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Mike Doran. I'm the owner of the house rate company and the builder of Susan Coolidge's new house on Pot Patmos Road. So, Mark St. Hilaire, Atlas Water Systems. Um, director of the residential group there. I'm Susan Coolidge. Um, my name is Steve Terrio. I work for Atlas Water Systems as well with Mark. Well, uh, we, we're familiar with what you want to talk to us about, so why don't you take the time to make your brief explanation? Explanation on the water treatment part? The yeah. yeah. Um, it would be nice if you just explained the the system itself, the fact that water is being brought to the site, yeah. uh, how it's being stored, okay. how it's being treated, okay. um, as a closed system. Mm -hmm. If you can briefly explain that. All right. Um, basically, there's going to be potable water delivered. I think it's Lawrence Tank that's mm -hmm. going to be delivering the water. We set up three 300 gallon tanks in the basement. Um, they have a connection on the outside, they will have a connection on the outside of the house that they can deliver the water and fill up the tanks. So we've essentially put a, like a well pump inside one of the 300 gallon tanks that's gonna deliver water through the filtration system and then back to the house. So basically the filtration system is it's potable water that's being delivered but where it's being stored we want to just make sure that we have uh, bacteria protection with the UV light we have even down to uh, sediment and virus and cyst protection down to 0.025 microns there basically it's sediment filter the uh, membrane system which is the ultra filter to get the 0.025 microns through a UV light and then it's going to be transferred back up to the house. So it's a, a, a little bit overkill, but definitely you know, make sure that anything that comes out of that tank can't get up to the house. Mr. 
condition with earth attack. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. Is yeah. there an alarm um, and when the water gets to a certain level? As far as the high level um, or the low Could level? Pass. Right now, there's no there's, there's no low level alarm in the tank to notify when the tanks are getting low. Well, so it says here that tank three will have a low level float to protect the pump. Yeah, the, yeah, the pump has low level protection, so making that signal to something else to light upstairs or something would be relatively easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have low level, we have high level, so when the trucks fill in the tanks, um, there's a solenoid that will close when the float reaches its high level on the tank, the solenoid will close so we can't overfill the tanks. Plus we'll have uh, overflow in the tanks if anything ever failed, so. And what's the maintenance on the system? Um, like any water treatment system, it's really based on how much use they have there. But it, it'll be a minimum of every year. You'll have to change out the UV lights, test that membrane system, make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do, and test on that water quality periodically. I was wondering, in reading over this, uh, when you said it you know, got over to me, um, a record or a submittal to us possibly on a yearly basis of the bacteriology, mm -hmm. uh, just so that we would have a comfort level that there's nothing cooking inside the system that would be harmful. Yeah. Would that be agreeable? Me too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's being checked yearly and reported to, reported to you yeah. guys. Reported, yeah. reported to yeah. us. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, we'll be doing, well, we, in that recommendation at the service, every year lab test checking that water at least annually. So, so just send you a copy if that would be that. sent to us, and we'd just keep a record of that. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. At least we'd have a confidence level. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we have a pretty good report we do on service too that we can send that shows the lights being changed, shows what we do. So. Okay. Any other questions? Do you have anything to add? Um. Not so much to add, just to, uh, to also to Mark's point that this 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 water coming into the home after it's been stored in these tanks should still should be pristine after going through the ultrafiltration. Mm -hmm. You know, the ultrafiltration is is key to this filtration aspect of it. Now, I bought water from Lawrence Water for my swimming pool filling. Uh, is that the same water that's that's sold for potable use? Do you know? My understanding is that they pull the fill in town water to fill that truck, so it's already. Yeah. So it's already meet standards. Yeah. Right. yeah. Um, did um, Dave from <coughs> from Lawrence Tank get you the information you you were looking for? You did. He did. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you talked to um, Dave from Lawrence Tank. And yeah. He did send it over. All right. And he said um, when they do deliver water, they will forward us the paperwork as well. Oh, okay. Every time they deliver Every water, they forward you the paperwork saying what they deliver? Okay, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Are you all set? Do you have any other questions? Yeah. You said there was an overflow outlet. Where is that? Right now, the plan's to bring that to the sump pump. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And also, the, the well tank that's there now, Yeah. will that be? It's just going to—it's useless. It's just going to stay there. When when we thought we were going to use the water from one of the wells, we put that, we installed that, and you know, and then the wells proved so uh, used at all. Pretty, pretty bad water. So, yeah. but I mean, if things ever change and and someone did want to use that well with an expensive, more expensive system that we're putting it out to clean the water, it's doable. It's just expensive and a lot of maintenance. Sure. So. Um, I think that well tank can just stay there. It's not doing anything. Just, you know, okay. capped off. Would you have an idea of how the system works? And well, I have an idea. Yeah, I mean, you'll be familiar with it. And if there's any, I mean, you have contacts. So oh, yeah. Get in touch with if there's any issues. Oh, yeah. yeah. We'll walk her through it. Yeah. 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 We'll go through it once, once the installation is complete mm -hmm. with the main. When will it be in? When are you planning on hooking this system up? 
tonight if you say <laughs> <laughs> go ahead we'll go hook it up tonight so it's ready to go yeah much. it's pretty much well ready. yeah it's got a few days left of work that would need to get done mm -hmm. what happens if the electricity goes out uh, same as with the typical well pump system, they're going to build, they won't have any water there. Yeah. Yeah. Just like when you're on a well, the pump can't work. Yeah. 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 So you won't be able to, it, you won't be able to draw water through the tank, so it can't go through the tank. But well, we'll talk Susan yeah. into a generator. She, <laughs> <laughs> she's, I think she's, she might like that idea. But that's the only key component she's missing out there. Yeah. She's got her own water. Got her own septic tank, and now she just needs her own electricity. <laughs> <laughs> Living off the grid. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> You're prepared. Any for questions from the audience? audience? No. no. Well, uh, if do you have any questions? No, yeah. sounds fine to me. So I have a question, actually. Um, somebody said that this would be the only house that has water um, delivered in Raleigh. Is that true? Yes. Do you foresee that with um, the ocean right, level rising, that, that this may become more of an issue with wells? It possibly could. Yeah. Uh, not too many people in Raleigh live along the salt in marsh. The marsh. Yeah, yeah. And, and few live in the salt marsh. So yeah. uh, it, it would be very few. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, I, I took, from my understanding, the, the, the demand of, a, say, a shallow well near the ocean or near the salt water, uh, if it's just a, a, a seasonal residence or a, a summer place or a, a duck hunting blind, wouldn't get that salt water intrusion like a, a more industrial or commercial well system that, that would be pulling the salt water towards the fresh water quicker. And they're running into that in, in a large way down in Cape Cod, uh -huh. uh, but it's a different type of substrate. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we're going to have a big problem with that here. Yeah. Well, do we have a motion to uh, accept this installation of this system? I move to accept the 125 Patmos Road uh, fresh water supply system as presented tonight, John Melcher. I'll second that, Susan L. Yeah, mm -hmm. along with our agreement to keep the office keep the, yeah. yearly informed with water mm -hmm. quality. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you, folks. Thank you, sir. Can we, uh, is it okay to proceed tomorrow? Is there a waiting period or anything like that? Uh, no, or I mean, to, yeah. this, this isn't is a permit. This is yeah. just an approval. Okay. Yeah. You know, the office. All right. Press. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good evening. See you. Where is Where is Atlas from? Middleton. Yeah. One fourteen. Oh. Yeah. We're nearby. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We'll get back to our business. <coughs> Next up, Frank, from you, is a brief mosquito control update yep. as to what's been going on. Yeah. Um, Speak up, don't be yeah. speak up. As you've been hearing, uh, West Nile is circulating throughout the state. Uh, in Essex County right now, they found positive in Ainsley, Beverly, Lynn, uh, Linfield, Marblehead, Merrimack, Middleton, Newbury, Newburyport, Raleigh, and Saucas. Um, it's, you know, we're just monitoring things day by day, moving the surveillance traps around, um, trying to follow the virus. Um, as you know, when we a couple weeks ago, we had a hit with some entire kids fighting. The um, last couple of weeks have been, been good. Uh, we're also watching the populations of uh, what's out there, the different species, and if they get too high, we'll probably get a call from mosquito control making some recommendations. So, the, is, uh, the 
checking on a daily basis, the traps on a daily basis? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, twice a week they collect samples and something that to be tested. Um, we're still at a low risk level for the state standards, but you know, again, pushing the precaution message out there. And, um, um, fortunately, in this area, they haven't found any positive triple E mosquitoes yet. Um, Come down the south shore and then western mass, but not in this area yet. So we're watching that closely. Uh, there were a couple horses out in um, western uh, mass also. It's um, pretty much it right now. Uh, and uh, they're doing uh, nuisance spraying around the playing fields? Yes, a barrier. Barrier so, spraying yes, is continuing? Yeah, all common areas, uh, ball fields, uh, cemetery, okay. and the like, um, as needed. Yeah. But it's done continuously throughout the season. Okay. Um, as well as the, uh, the salt marsh. Oh, the lava so, side. Yeah, yep. That's on uh, continuously also. Um, that's about it for right now. Thank you. you any questions. Next up is uh, OR. To set to discuss and set a date for our annual household hazardous waste day. Yeah, as you know, we normally have it in November unless you want to change that. Uh. <coughs> no, I think that's a good, it's always worked well for us. Okay. People are attuned to it. Uh, what, what day are we? We usually do it around the third week, don't we? Yeah. Thanksgiving is late, right? The 28th? 28th, yeah. So you have uh, four Three. Saturdays in November you can choose from. Well, the 23rd is the Saturday before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. It can be cold out there. Yeah, it can be cold. Unless you wanted to go earlier, it's up to you. What does the board want to do? It's the 16th. 23rd is okay with me. I'm feeling pretty great right now. It's 80 degrees. Yeah, because you're going to not be here, right? I'll be here. I kind of like the 23rd. Okay. Can we do that? Sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll check if it's available. I'm sure it yeah. is. Usually sure. that'll be in the season. So you're in Clean Harbor? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, good. So we'll get that. Contract and get it over yep. to sign. Please do. Yep. And we'll uh, reserve that date and make sure it's available. Uh, next up is your quarterly report on the uh, septic loan program. Yep. In your packet, you'll see the, uh, the quarterly report for the program. Um, our last report. Let's do at the end of March. We have a ending balance of four hundred two thousand two hundred ninety-seven dollars and eighteen cents. Um, we did not uh, draw anything down last uh, quarter. Um, you mean were take any more? Taking more, more money from the our, our from the fund. fund. Right. Exactly. Um, there were some disbursements made. There were two loans that were done during that period, and you'll see on page two. Uh, she, she very yeah, those are future, uh, future loans. And on page two, you see the, the disbursements that were actually made, uh, totaling $15,645. Uh, next is the um, some administrative costs. There was um, some legal services for the $550,000 bond. That out. And we had an ending balance of three hundred eighty-three thousand four hundred fifty-two dollars fifteen cents. And like I said, there's um, some plans for disbursement for the next four years. Mm -hmm. I think for people watching, can you just describe what disbursement means yes. versus drawdown? Yep. Disbursements, um, when someone comes in for the loan and we process the loan, um, these are bills that we, we pay.
paid. Uh, the money submit bills to us, we process them, and you can see they're broken down. There's an engineering bill there, uh, a couple of installation bills. Um, yeah, those are specific bills that were submitted to us to process. Okay. That were paid. Okay. Questions on that? No. Nope. Nope. I think things are going along fine. We have money in the account. We do, yeah. For other landowners to uh, participate. We do. All right. Um, and also, this is the annual report. Uh, we do this at the end of every fiscal year. Um, this was for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2013. You'll see the starting balance there from the from last year, one million two hundred twenty-three thousand three hundred seventeen dollars and eighty cents. Um, again, we did not draw down any money this past year. Last time we had drawn down was a two hundred thousand, but it was in the previous fiscal year. At the end, um, you'll see there next the collections from the regular tax billings, which totaled fifty-one thousand four hundred forty dollars and ninety-one cents. See in February and May what was collected. Um, then we have the lump sum collections of $15,411.16. You'll see that there was one payoff um, on 5 7 2013, $10,411.16. And the other four were additional payments made on principal for an existing loan. Like I said, there was one loan that was paid off during that period. Um, next is the principal's payments made to the trust, which we brought in the approved at town meeting, which is $25,939, uh, which leaves us a balance at the end of FY13 of $1,264,230.80. Um, okay. Thank you. Questions on that? No, okay. no, no. Go ahead. Okay. So next up is uh, oh, we're going to discuss the yeah. potential changes. Right. Well, last meeting you had asked if we could borrow money at either the annual or the special town meeting, and it does, either one is fine. Um, but like you just said, there were some changes made, um, if you want to well, mention that. And, and we haven't, we, uh, I, I've made an inquiry uh, to see if possibly uh, this wouldn't affect at least the, the monies that we've had in our initial drawdown, but that's, I've not got a response from the the water pollution abatement trust people yet, so we can't really speak about that. But it, it, as we all thought and kind of suspected in time, that the state fund uh, would run out of uh, funding to uh, give to communities to give low in low interest rate loans for septic system improvements. And that, that time has come at the end of the last fiscal year. And so at the beginning of this year, uh, the water state, the Massachusetts Water Pollution Abatement Trust uh, will charge us an in interest rate of 2%. And so we, we will have to pass that interest rate on to uh, future loans. How often do they adjust it? Uh, uh, there's, there's no, in, uh, I don't think this will, this definitely won't be, I think this was as part of the authorization to give, put more money into this fund, I think uh, it's, it, it's, it says here it's required by the the uh, trust's enabling statute, so I don't think we'll be seeing any reductions. So <clears throat> currently we charge uh, 
two percent. And over the next few weeks, we will get a clarification on what we've requested uh, from the trust to answer that question, and we'll have to determine what we think would be a fair increase in the percent and pay careful attention to what the competitive rate is at lending institutions because because we want we, we want to continue to have a favorable rate because the whole purpose of this funding and the whole purpose of this program is to motivate landowners to improve and uh, fix systems at, 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 a, at a reasonable percentage rate. So that's pretty much where we're at right now. Um, we have office administration items. First, some bills. That's it. Good. We have a set of minutes from July 1st. Um, Has everyone had a chance to check over the minutes as presented? Yes. Need a little more time? A little bit. Should have some music or something. It's quiet times. <laughs> we can tell jokes. But like, like music in a dentist office? Yeah, dental music. Noodling music. So like dental humor? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Like German humor? <laughs> well, this could be one of our quickest meetings. Yes. Nice. Yeah, this <coughs> so does someone want to make a motion? Accept the minutes. John Melcher, I move to accept the minutes of July 1st, 2013. I second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, you can sign that. <coughs> Susan will sign your copy. Okay. Uh, we accepted the minutes. Does anyone have any other items to bring up today? Next meeting day? Thoughts, well, we'd be into September. Uh, I thought we would get someone to speak with us about Lyme's disease. Yeah, there's a lot of that coming again. Yeah. So let's see, September. Sixteenth? Yeah, that's good. I'm away the ninth. Or 
Sixteenth. Sure. Sixteenth is good. Okay. Yeah. September sixteenth. please. Frank, do you have anything to add? Thank you.